Hello and welcome to this session designed for you, the new mother. Congratulations on giving birth to your baby, a significant and wonderful event in your life. Childbearing affects your body and your pelvic floor and you should be aware of certain pelvic floor issues that might be or become problematic for you. In this video, we will review the recovery and healing process as well as look more closely at pelvic floor issues. My name is Grace and I'm a clinical nurse specialist part of the multidisciplinary team at the Pelvic Floor Clinic in Calgary, Alberta. Our clinic sees many women referred for pelvic floor issues such as bladder and bowel control and pelvic organ prolapse. There are a variety of factors which contribute to the development of pelvic floor issues, but the biggest risk factor is having a baby. When you are young and relatively healthy, in most cases your body tends to cope fairly well with the effects of birthing, but later in life, damage from childbearing and lifestyle issues may catch up with you and you might start experiencing symptoms. So now is your chance to hear about these things, to learn what you can do now to prevent issues from becoming major problems and what you can do now if you're already experiencing some problems. We will briefly review the anatomy of the pelvic floor, where it is, what it does and what happens during both pregnancy and during the birth process. We will look at some of the common things new mums go through, such as difficulty with bowel movements, peeing or vaginal dryness. We will talk about lifestyle factors that can aggravate these issues and what can be done to prevent them from becoming bigger, longer term problems in the future. We will discuss the importance of pelvic floor muscle training, how to strengthen and use these muscles for your lifetime. I strongly recommend that you look at the five basic videos on this website that go into much greater depth on these issues. This video will just be a quick overview. So let's start with a closer look at the pelvic floor, what it is and where it is. The pelvic floor is found at the base of the pelvis, between your legs. You may think of it as the bottom of a canister. Your muscles and bones in your abdomen, back and sides are the sides of the canister and the top is your diaphragm muscle that moves your lungs up and down, helping you breathe. Your abdominal contents sit on the base of this canister, that is, on the pelvic floor. There are no bones underneath the pelvic floor, only circling around it. So the pelvic floor muscles located here bear the impact of the abdominal contents like a sling or trampoline. This group of muscles is intersected by three openings in women, the urethra from the bladder, the vagina in the middle, and the anus at the back. You can see the muscles encircle these openings and affect their functioning. There are different levels and layers of muscle here. Here is a side view. On the left is the urethra, which drains urine from the bladder above, the vagina in the center, and the anus and rectum at the right, where stool collects prior to a bowel movement. At the top of the vagina is the cervix, the opening to the uterus, where your babies grow in pregnancy. The red line indicates where the muscles lie like a hammock, extending from the pubic bone in the front to the tailbone in the back and how they are intersected by the three openings. The pelvic floor helps support these organs in their normal positions. A healthy pelvic floor is essential for bladder and bowel control by contracting and relaxing the muscles. It has a vital role in sexual activity. It also assists with lifting and carrying by controlling the internal abdominal pressures. You can think of the pelvic floor like a trampoline. Trampolines usually bounce back, but can be damaged with too much weight or strain on them. Our pelvic floors can also be damaged from things like pregnancy and delivering a baby, which affects how they function now or later. We must protect our pelvic floor from potential problems so they continue to support effectively and to work well for the duration of our lives. Everyone's experience during a vaginal delivery varies somewhat, but in all cases, the baby's head and body must come through what is called the birth canal, or from the uterus, through the cervical opening, through the vagina, and out through the vaginal opening. Not all, but many women will have tears inside the vagina and or in the vaginal opening, usually extending backwards towards the anus. These tears can be classified according to their extent. First-degree tears involve only the skin and generally heal quickly. 
A second degree tear is deeper, involving the muscle as well as the skin. A third degree tear goes into the anal sphincter muscle, and a fourth degree tear is a complete tear from the vaginal opening to the anus through the anal sphincter. Women that deliver a baby by cesarean section do not experience the same process and do not have the stretching, perineal pressure, and potential tearing of a vaginal birth. However, just being pregnant can overload your pelvic floor. Pregnancy hormones and the weight of your baby loosens and stretches it. You may find the recovery of your pelvic floor easier as you won't be as swollen and sore, but you should follow the same pelvic floor exercise instructions that follow. Also because of the pregnancy hormones, your blood volume doubles. The urethra, the tube from the bladder, dilates and loses some of its tone. Obviously, the uterus gets much bigger and heavier as the baby grows and pushes down on the pelvic floor and on your bladder. The type and length of labor and delivery will affect your pelvic floor. The days and weeks after delivery are important. There is often a lot of swelling, pain, and even loss of sensation or tone in your pelvic floor after a vaginal delivery. You may find it difficult to empty your bladder or resume bowel movements. You may have pain and spasms and need to use medications. You may feel you're not able to completely empty your bladder and lose control over how or when it functions. On top of this, you start to lose all the extra fluid you gained in your blood and tissues while you were pregnant. So you need to pee a lot in the first few days. Your body does recover and heal, but the recovery takes time. It is very important to get up and get moving soon after delivering. As your body starts to get rid of the extra fluid you accumulated during pregnancy, you will need to pee frequently. So we suggest you try every two to three hours during the first week, even if you do not feel the sensation or urge to. Don't push or strain to pee or poo, not after delivery and not ever. Ensure that your bowel movements are soft so they don't aggravate your bottom. Rinse off your bottom, ideally after every time you visit the toilet with warm tap water to keep it clean. Use iced peri pads to help reduce swelling and for comfort. Things should be settling down a bit more by week two. A good pattern for emptying your bladder is about every three to four hours. Not too often, but don't hold for longer, except for the rare occasion when you may be able to sleep through the night. Stay well hydrated. Drink enough fluids to keep your urine a light yellow color. While breastfeeding, this may be more than what you are used to. Again, ensure your bowel movements are soft. It is okay to sit and soak in a tub of warm water, but not with any bubble bath or oils. Epsom salts are fine. Your bleeding will lighten and lessen. A cesarean section is a major operation, so don't push yourself. Allow your body to heal and start slowly with activities. Give yourself a few months before you attempt anything more strenuous than walking. You can start practicing your pelvic floor exercises right away. We will now discuss pelvic floor muscle training and return to exercise with one of our physiotherapists. As Grace has already said, the pelvic floor muscles provide support to your pelvic organs and keep you continent of urine, stool, and gas. They also work with your deep abdominals, deep low back muscles, and respiratory diaphragm to provide postural stability. You may have heard of this group of muscles referred to as your core. Pelvic floor muscle exercises are also sometimes called kegels. The name of the pelvic floor muscle group is the levator ani, suggesting there is a lifting action. There are circular shaped muscles called sphincters around the urethra and the anus. They pinch these openings closed as the pelvic floor lifts during a pelvic floor muscle contraction, like a door or an elevator. After the contraction, make sure you completely relax the muscles before doing another contraction. On verbal instruction, only about 25% of people can contract their pelvic floors properly. After you've had a baby, you may find it more difficult to isolate and contract these muscles. Can you squeeze your anus in a pinching fashion and then lift it up into your body? Imagine your anus is a bucket at the bottom of a well and you are lifting the bucket up the well. Then completely relax the anus. Think of letting the bucket drop all the way back down the well. Alternatively, imagine squeezing to stop urine from coming out and feel the squeeze and the lift of the pelvic floor. This is a small group of muscles and therefore it will not feel like a big contraction. Don't hold your breath or tense your thighs, buttocks, or ribcage. 
If you are struggling with how to perform these exercises, speak with your doctor, nurse continence advisor, or pelvic health physiotherapist. You can find pelvic health physiotherapists in your community who can help you find these muscles and get you started with a program. In Alberta, go to the Physiotherapy Alberta website. Here is the link. Here are some suggestions for exercising these muscles at home. Do the exercises in a position where you feel the contraction the best. Initially, this will likely be lying down or sitting. You can start your exercises right after you have delivered your baby. Try doing them three separate times a day to allow repeated practice sessions to improve your body awareness. Squeeze and lift and hold the contraction for up to 10 seconds. Relax completely for the same length of time that you could hold your contraction and repeat this up to 10 times in a row. If you cannot hold for a full 10 seconds, practice holding as many seconds as you can and relax when you no longer feel the contraction. Wait 10 seconds before the next contraction. You can add one second to your hold time per week until you reach the ability to hold for 10 seconds and relax 10 seconds after each repetition. Speed contractions are when you quickly squeeze and lift the pelvic floor and quickly relax. Repeat up to 10 times, ensuring you relax between each repetition. If you have pain that gets worse with these exercises, consult with your doctor or pelvic health physiotherapist. If you cannot feel yourself relax, try repeating the exercise but holding the contraction for a shorter period of time. It is very important to empty the bowel and the bladder correctly. The position and technique is important. Postpartum women need to minimize stress and strain on the pelvic floor when emptying the bowel and bladder. Repetitive bearing down and straining on the toilet can lead to urinary incontinence and prolapse. First, put a small footstool under your feet so your knees are slightly higher than your hips. Then bring your knees together, relax your pelvic floor to open the anus and the urethra. Sit tall and lean forward slightly to bring yourself to a squat-like position. Try to breathe normally and make sure you don't hold your breath to push. You can try blowing out gently against a closed fist or breathing through pursed lips rather than holding your breath and bearing down. Keep the pelvic floor relaxed throughout bowel and bladder emptying. After emptying your bladder, if you often feel there is more to empty, sometimes dribble after getting up off the toilet, you may try double voiding. This means you relax and let your bladder empty as much as it will, and then you can lean forward at the hips or go side to side on your sit bones, and then relax your pelvic floor again to see if you are able to empty any more urine. If you have had a tear or an episiotomy, your scar may be painful or sensitive, especially at the beginning. After about six weeks, your tissues should be healed. Your doctor can check this for you. At this point, you can start to mobilize your scar, which will help your tissues become more flexible and less painful. With your finger, gradually press onto the scar. On a scale of zero to 10, stop when the pain or discomfort is about a four or five out of 10. Hold the stretch until the pain reduces. You can then add a bit of back and forth movement with your finger, but don't slide on the skin. Then move to another spot on the scar and repeat the process. Do this every other day. If you are struggling with painful intercourse that isn't improving with time, consult with your doctor or pelvic health physiotherapist. Your pelvic floor may feel weaker postpartum. It is therefore important to pace your daily activities, especially taking care not to be on your feet for long periods of time. Listen to your body and appreciate that it will take time to build your endurance and tolerance to activity back up again. When you are lifting, pushing, or pulling in your daily activities, try to contract your pelvic floor and don't hold your breath as you do the activity. This will improve support in the pelvis. If you leak urine when you cough, sneeze, or laugh, quickly contract your pelvic floor right before the pressure hits your bladder. Returning to exercise is highly variable between women and is dependent on many factors. It takes many months for your body to completely return to its pre-baby state. If you increase your activity gradually over time, you will be less likely to run into problems. Here are some website links to sites that provide guidelines of how to return to activity after delivery. If you leak urine or have poor control of stool, if you feel heaviness or pressure in your pelvic floor, or if you have pelvic pain, consult with your doctor or pelvic health physiotherapist. For more information on returning to exercise, have a look at these Australian websites.
Now I will briefly describe some of the common pelvic floor issues women may notice during the childbearing phase of their life. I will mention the symptoms you may notice and things you can do to help and how to protect yourself from worsening in the future. We will look at pelvic organ prolapse, which happens to over half of all women, bladder control and leakage issues known as incontinence, and also bowel control issues. Many, many women deal with these issues. You are not alone. For more information about any of these issues, review the five basic modules. Pelvic organ prolapse, when the bladder, uterus, or rectum shift from their normal position and fall or sag against the vaginal wall, may cause bulging or other symptoms. You see the arrows indicating which direction the organs sag. This can be mild with no symptoms or can be or become more severe over time. There are various options for dealing with prolapse if it becomes a bother to you. They include strengthening and training your pelvic floor muscles, as already discussed, being careful with certain activities and protecting your pelvic floor, wearing a pessary, and for some women, surgery. We won't discuss pessaries or surgery in this video, but see the video on pelvic organ prolapse on our website. Urinary incontinence is when you leak urine involuntarily, which is not normal, even with childbirth and with aging. Normally the bladder holds about one to two cups of urine and you should be able to hold it for three to four hours during the day, which works out to approximately six to eight times every 24 hours. It is normal to sleep through the night but if you are up once or twice to pee, it is likely due to fluids you drank later in the day, not abnormal to process it during the night. There are two main types of incontinence, stress and overactive bladder, and some women have both, mixed incontinence. Many women notice stress incontinence first during pregnancy or even before, and it may worsen over time. Overactive bladder is a strong, sudden urge to void with or without leakage and peeing frequently. Some women have a mixture of both types. For more information about bladder control issues, see the video on urinary incontinence. Here you can see options for dealing with stress incontinence, and here are the options for dealing with overactive bladder or urge incontinence. Some of the treatment options differ, which is why it is important to determine what type of incontinence is affecting you. If you are having symptoms of either type of leakage, See video number three on urinary incontinence on the website. Childbearing, especially with a difficult vaginal delivery and tearing, can be the start of bowel control issues now or in the future. Constipation is common, but not normal, and you should try and deal with it. Anal leakage is very difficult to live with. If you have either of these issues, please go to the video on bowel control, video number four on our website. As you can see, these issues are not rare. Really, they affect half, maybe even more, of all women. Many women either ignore these issues or feel that they're the only ones dealing with them. Treatment options can be very simple lifestyle changes, and we encourage you to become aware of what you can do to deal with them. Eat healthy foods that are high in fiber and drink enough non-irritating fluids like water. Bladder habits, don't be in a hurry when you pee, take your time on the toilet, and don't push or strain. Aim to go every three or four hours. Going more often than that or holding it longer than that, even if you can, can have an impact on how your bladder functions in the future. It is ideal to have a soft form bowel movement and not having to push or strain. You need to eat well with healthy high fiber foods in the right quantities. There are community-based dietitians who specialize in the care of postpartum women. A healthy diet and weight will also help to optimize your pelvic floor function by minimizing strain or pressure on it. Smoking irritates both the bladder and rectum and affects their tissue and health. Smoking often causes chronic coughing. Coughing, from any cause, is hard on your pelvic floor. The last thing we will discuss is vaginal dryness, common for postpartum moms who are breastfeeding their babies and resuming vaginal intercourse. Meet Dr. Robert, who will address these issues. Vaginal dryness is quite common in postpartum mothers who are breastfeeding their babies and can make the resumption of intercourse difficult and uncomfortable. Once your hormones return to normal, the dryness will disappear. This is different for different women and will also depend on how long you choose to breastfeed. 
as well. The opening to your vagina may be sensitive and tender for some weeks if you've had a vaginal delivery. It may be necessary to use vaginal lubrication before and during penetrating intercourse until everything returns to normal. Lubricants simply make the surfaces slippery for a short period of time. Vaginal moisturizers, on the other hand, are useful to make the vagina moister. Although you may still require lubrication for intercourse, neither lubricants nor moisturizers require a prescription but are available at all pharmacies. They contain no medications or hormones. If moisturizers are not enough to help the dryness, your physician can provide a prescription for vaginal estrogen to use while you are still nursing your baby. This comes in a vaginal cream, a pill, or a ring. Intercourse can be resumed once you feel comfortable. There is no set time frame when to start again, although many women feel comfortable to try by six weeks after their delivery. It should be a trial and error process initially. Go slowly and carefully. By 12 weeks, your tissue should have healed. If you find that you're still sore when you wipe after going to the bathroom or when you wash in the shower and sex is painful, you should certainly seek help. You may want to begin with a pelvic health physiotherapist. I hope this presentation has been helpful for you. We sincerely hope this information has addressed some questions you may have and also given you a better understanding of the very common issues that affect women, like bowel and bladder concerns and prolapse issues, often starting with having babies. We want you to think about your lifestyle issues in the years to come and understand that even if you're not having any symptoms or problems now, they may arise in the future. You can do a lot to prevent them, equipped with an understanding of how the little things make a big difference in the future. Some of you may never experience any problems. However, we know that some of you may run into issues and some of you may be noticing some symptoms right now. The ongoing symptoms you may notice would include bladder and bowel control issues as described on this slide, or discomfort from vaginal pressure or bulging that may indicate prolapse. If you were referred to our pelvic floor clinic by your physician or midwife and are watching this video after receiving instructions from our clinic to do so, you are welcome to book a one-on-one -on -one assessment in our clinic. We will provide you with a phone number to call and will pull your referral letter when you do. If you are not having any symptoms or concerns, simply carry on, but remember things mentioned in this video. If you are watching this video and have not been referred to the clinic, but are having some concerns about symptoms, we would be happy to see you in the future, but we do require a referral letter from your doctor or midwife. Learn what you can from our website, and you can also access private pelvic floor physio by using the link provided. Remember, what you do makes a big difference. Here are some links if you're seeking more information. Good luck, enjoy your baby.